Time now for top picks, and we're going to kick it off with Arc Resources, which recently caught some praise from analysts at RBC. I was reading uh, a summary of the note. Uh, RBC's analysts uh, praising Arc for rewarding shareholders through uh, it's through its dividend and through share buybacks. Why do you like this name? You know, this is one of those premier gas companies in Canada. It's kind of a granddaddy among all the companies, been around a long time, We're always very well regarded with respect to its management uh, and, and stewardship of the assets. It, it, it has all the right characteristics in terms of own their infrastructure, which helps them manage costs and kind of how they stage growth, very solid balance sheet. They're in the right areas. It's a Montney gas producer, so it's a liquid rich gas producer. Um, I kind of intertwine it with tourmaline, which has been a topic many other times, but I just figured, okay, I've said tourmaline too many times, so I'll use ARC this time. <laughs> Has a nice 3.2% dividend yield. Hopefully you'll correct me, Paige, if I'm wrong. Um, uh, I think the only um, overhang perhaps with this name is it is caught up like tourmaline a bit with some of the First Nations claims in Northeast BC, which has uh, caused kind of a moratorium on permitting, so their attache asset, which is a high growth asset that they want to develop, like Tourmaline's Conroy, is a bit embroiled in that. Hopefully, we'll see resolution and we'll see permitting open up before the end of the year, which will really take the reins off and allow them to exercise some further growth. But besides that, probably what RBC was referring to was, again, the infamous shareholder capital return framework, which they're targeting 50 to 80% a free cash flow, which right now they're yielding, I think around 18% free cash flow yield. So I see no issue with them executing a 10% normal course issuer bid in the next calendar or 12 months. Uh, the dividend yielding 3.3%. Uh, that's what I see on my Bloomberg terminal here. And since we get asked so frequently about the uh, street consensus, 15 analysts cover this stock all have a buy rating. Let's go now to your second uh, top pick, which is White Cap Resources that uh, recently announced an acquisition. Tell us why you're interested in this stock. Yeah, great. Um, this is an oil leverage name, so I kind of like to balance things off. Uh, again, been around a long time. The XTO acquisition was $1.7 billion, highly accretive to the company, whether it's production per share, cash flow, free cash flow, it's north of 20% and all those measures. Um, used, it was a cash offer. Um, I think that created a bit of an overhang, even though management has been buying after the deal was announced, and that's always a positive sign. I think there was some concern about uh, leveraging up again especially in a higher priced environment for commodity prices, uh, and also what it meant for shareholder return of capital. You know, does it disturb that natural process that people have gotten used to? I think management did a very good job of kind of tying in debt targets with increases in the base dividend. I think if they meet their debt targets, which should be reasonably accomplished under an $85 or higher oil price, they would increase the base dividend by 65% at the end of 12 months. I think there's two increments in there uh, if they meet their debt goals. I think it's not, uh, it would be accomplished in 12 months. After that goal is met, uh, they would then return, I think it's 75% of free cash flow to shareholders. Again, probably in the form of buybacks as well as increasing the base dividend, which right now, again, hopefully Paige, I'm right, <laughs> is 4.2%. Um, so I think I see a very nice balance there. The XTO acquisition has very good growth parameters. They're going to go from, uh, basically, I think they're going to double the production in the next couple of years and kind of stabilize it at that point. So uh, it's a name that we find very attractive. We've owned it really for a number of years and have been adding to it since uh, the beginning of the year. So close. Dividend yield, 4.3%. Uh, I think you said 4.2. So again, bravo. Close. I'm getting better. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go to your third top pick, which is CF Industries, which is a fertilizer play. Yeah, and I'll start with the yield on this one. So this one's 1 1.8%, <laughs> I think. Uh, this is a the largest nitrogen producer in the world. The majority, I think only one of their plants is in the UK. Everything else is in North America, Canada, and the US. Uh, this is a bit of a play on gas. So it's the largest nutri uh, nutri nitrogen producer in the world. Obviously, one of the three basic fertilizers, the others being potash and phosphate. Um, there are two drivers for nitrogen and the upside. One is gas prices, because it is the largest 
cost input for producing ammonia, which we get nitrogen from. And I think being located in North America and the gas differential is just significant. You know, you're averaging, let's call it $6 in North America versus what you see at $30 plus in Europe. So a lot of supply coming offline, which bolsters their ability to sell into a strong nitrogen gas mar or nitrogen pricing market. The other dynamic is crop prices, which are elevated compared to history. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be able to benefit from farmers' incomes remaining strong, which means they can continue to buy important fertilizer inputs.